Welcome to your fifth lab in Physics 187. In today's lab, or this week's lab, and the lab we'll be doing next week, we'll begin to look at the motion of stars. And we can think about the motion of stars as really having two parts. One that's across our line of sight, and one that moves toward us or away from us. In today's lab, what we'll do is we'll look at the motion of the stars across our line of sight. If you go out at night, you'll obviously notice that the stars move across the sky, but that's due to the Earth's rotation. And the actual change in the position of the stars with respect to other stars is actually quite slow. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to watch the stars over a period of, of a fairly long time, in this case about 2,000 years. And so we'll be looking at archival data to help um, come up with a motion of those stars. Let me go ahead and open the lab up for you so you'll see what you'll be looking at when you begin this lab. So you will see a view of the sky with a number of stars um, shown on that particular sky. My suggestion, depending on the resolution of your screen, is to make sure that you maximize this window so that you're able to see this clock in the left-hand lower corner of the screen and also, if you click on a star, that you'll be able to see this menu bar right down here. Make sure you turn on the grid. And now what I will do is I will just simply start the animation. I'll run it very fast. And you'll be able to see that some stars move across the sky. You'll be able to identify the stars by clicking on the star. And you'll notice in the bottom um, menu bar, you'll t be told that you've selected star number four. Your goal is to determine the proper motion of these stars over the course of a period, as you can see here, about 2,000 years. Now you might be tempted to just simply run the animation, start, locate the position of the star when you start, and locate the position of the star at the end. But what we'd like to do is we'd really like to track the stars over the course of their motion to make sure that we're accurately capturing how they're actually moving. So the way you'll approach this is you'll restart the animation, make sure it's stopped, reset the animation so that the stars are located at their original point in the sky, and then rather than starting the animation, you're going to step through the animation. And what I'd like you to do for this particular lab is measure their motion approximately every 400 years. So you will step in 100 year increments four times until the clock reading at the bottom indicates 400 years. You will then mark the position of these stars move on to 800 years, mark the position of the stars, and continue on in that manner until you get um, to 2,000 years. In the D2L um, resources for this course, there will be a grid that will match the grid that you have on the sky. And what you should do is you should just transfer their positions on this grid to the comparable position on the paper grid. When you do this lab, I would suggest that you do each star individually so that you pick star one, and track its position every 400 years, then pick star two, then pick star three, and so on. Don't try to keep track of all six of those stars for each 400 increment step. I think you'll have much more success if you focus on tracking the location of an individual star um, over each of these 2,000 year spans. Once you've located their position then, your next step is to go ahead and figure out how fast these stars move. And so you might have something that looks like this on your graph paper. So you'll have these positions of the stars, and you'll draw a best fit line through those positions to capture the motion of the stars over those 200 years. What you then need to do is translate this line on a piece of paper to an actual angular speed. You know that the star has been moving 2,000 years, so your denominator is going to be 2,000 you'll be looking at the angular speed in arc seconds per year. You're told that the total field of view here is worth 100,000 arc seconds, so each one of these squares corresponds to 5,000 arc seconds. 
If the motion of these stars would be simply horizontal or vertical, this would be a very easy lab. You could just count the number of squares, multiply by 5,000 to get the number of arc seconds it's moved in these 2,000 years. Unfortunately, most of your lines will be vertical or diagonal, and so what you'll need to do is you'll need to find the scale for your particular graph paper. So you'll need a ruler for this lab. You'll measure the length of those 100,000 um, arc seconds on your piece of paper, and then you'll find a scale to figure out how many centimeters um, are equivalent to one arc second or vice versa. So you'll need to set a scale. Then you can measure the line in centimeters using your ruler, use your scale in terms of the equivalent number of arc seconds per centimeter to find the total angular distance the star has moved and then divide by 2,000 to find the angular speed of that star. Your check your answers box will give you each of those five stars and you'll be asked to enter the speed in arc seconds per year for each of those stars. Remember you can find out which star you're working on by clicking on the star and seeing the name in the um, bottom strip. Um, I will caution you that this lab is, is particularly finicky and so I would ask that you will pay very, very close attention to making those measurements and marking the positions of the stars on your graph paper. Good luck with the lab. If you have any questions, please email me.